Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. If you're a project manager and you've ever thought to yourself, if I'd known then what I know now, I'd have done things differently, then you'll appreciate that everything seems clearer and easier with hindsight. But generating your own hindsight is hard and often painful. George Bernard Shaw said, if history repeats itself and the unexpected always happens, how incapable man must be of learning from experience. I think that project managers can learn a lot from each other's experience and especially from sharing their scars. Sharing experience gives you access to somebody else's hindsight without the hard work and the pain. So as part of my campaign for real project managers, on your behalf, I'm talking to some real project managers I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can benefit from their experience. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Becca Prido, who's going to share some of her experiences with us. Becca, I'd like you to start, if you can, by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. I'm been managing projects on and off most of my career, which is rather longer than I care to admit. <laughs> um, it's something that I fell into rather accidentally. It certainly wasn't what I set out to do. I actually trained within the health service, but went to work within um, a small, rapidly growing manufacturing company. And they were going through uh, a big systems implementation. The mainframe that we were using was due to fall over at the end of the month. So they were on a very tight deadline. So the external project manager was pregnant and went on maternity leave early. And our financial director was sacked for fraud. Oh. So <laughs> it was a little bit of case of, OK, who doesn't look terribly busy today? <laughs> Um, I worked out how to do one thing on the computer and before I knew it I was running the whole implementation project and running an IT department. I had no idea what I was doing but was able to muddle my way through using other organisational skills I had which I think is possibly how a lot of people fall into project management. I think so. Um, I then ran a number of projects within that organisation. It was very small, so there was no formal training. But once you've done something well once in a small business, you get to do it again and again and again. Before I moved on to working in HR roles and organisation effectiveness role, my passion is helping other people shine and helping them be really good at what they do. I moved into other companies and ran and worked in numerous more systems projects, um, lots of organisational change projects, not always downsizing, sometimes upscaling departments, big recruitment projects, changing the way that companies run some of their internal processes from a people perspective. So for me, projects are a fantastic way of bringing people together to achieve something and that's what I love about them. So looking back over your project management career, mm -hmm. can you um, tell us in, about an example of a scar, so something that went wrong <laughs> on a project that you were managing? Or you only you need one, it? I think. <laughs> <laughs> there are so, so many. The one I think I'm going to share is pretty cringeworthy from my perspective, having said that the thing that's really important to me around projects is getting people to work really effectively together. It's one right. where I got brought into a project quite late, um, before it had really formed though but with a very tight deadline. Um, I was working for a FTSE 100 company who were going through a global restructure and I'd been involved in that process and bringing one of five global functions together so I'd done some strategy work with them talking about what they were going to do and actually as a result of one of our, our workshops I'd asked some questions about an event they had coming up they were doing a big global conference the head of department kind of had been told by them that everything was under control it was going to be marvellous um, and he then started digging and it turned out nobody had really done anything other than book the flights in the venue and get everybody expecting a great conference, which is a good start. Um, so he asked me to come in and run it as a project. We had something like a, a eight weeks to turn from zero content into something really good. I'd assumed everybody was on board with using this conference to really bring the teams together and for each part of the function to understand what the others were contributing. We agreed a basic structure of how we were going to approach the project, who was going to work on what bits, who was going mm -hmm. to deliver what in the conference, all the things you'd expect. And yeah. I, as I say, assumed that everybody was okay with that. Most people said they were. We had a couple of people who said they weren't, and that was great because you can manage those. But I had one head of department within this who said he was on board but his actions didn't kind of back it up. I very quickly found that he was fairly new in the organisation so was his boss and I was being used as a pawn between the two of them which feels rubbish. So I had to figure out how I was going to work this to get what I needed to do. Now I'm quite stubborn and quite competitive so it became like a game to get this guy on board. He was doing things like telling his team not to talk to me which is just yeah <laughs> it's just bizarre not turning up to meetings, not returning phone calls, all the usual ghosting stuff. So 
I ended up waiting till I knew he was out of the office, then having coffee with a few of his team. So I drank a lot of coffee on a day, <laughs> drove about 200 miles to see them face to face and just accidentally turn up. So I found they were very frustrated with him and they were absolutely up for turning the situation around. So gathered some allies. And what was really important to him was looking good in front of his peers. So. I looked for ways that I could help him look good in front of his colleagues and if he didn't do what I needed him to do he'd look really stupid. Um, so I went back to the processes we had for the project and the weekly reporting. I started talking to people ahead of the report going out around their red flag issues. First couple of weeks of this this guy didn't contribute to the report came up with every excuse under the sun right. but by week three that wasn't okay anymore because he was looking silly for not contributing and so he then contributed and he saw what was happening with the others not getting reds and he wanted to know how that worked so funnily enough suddenly I became a hero and he wanted my help so that was like yes <laughs> <laughs> and we did get there in the end and it was rocky and it cost me a fortune on my coffee cart but it was worth it um, and I think by the end of the conference the CEO was really pleased with how everybody's teams had contributed and one of the reasons he, when we got into the conversations, he'd stalled on getting his team involved is he was worried they wouldn't be as good as the other teams. Oh, right. Now, I'm used to coaching people to give presentations and to perform from the stuff I was doing outside, so I talked about that. And we were able then to put a program in place with his team to make sure that they look good. Mm -hmm. I was actually doing that with everybody at the conference, so it wasn't anything off plan from my perspective. It was just a slot again. But for him, that also unlocked it was okay to let his team do it. And it can be very hard for a new leader to let go and trust their team if that's what's really important to them. And suddenly they hear the CEO is coming and it, the ante gets upped. So they're looking for ways to fix that. So we delivered the conference. It worked. We ended up with a really engaged top tier of leaders in that function. CEO was thrilled with it. <laughs> we all went home, slept a lot and were very relieved. So we delivered on all our KPIs and our long term measures. Um, but if you'd asked me two weeks out whether I was going to survive with a job at the end of it, I wasn't at all convinced. What did you learn from that? I've become somewhat fanatical about making sure I stop and understand people's motivations around the benefits of the projects due to deliver and their personal motivations, so how the two play together. Um, and I, I found since that investing that time up front to really understand that has saved me being in that awful position where you're not quite sure if you're going to get there more times than maybe I care to count and it sometimes can feel for particularly the people you're doing the projects with that you're wasting time and can you just get on it does help as you go through the project to make it that you're working together on the problems on the projects rather than working against each other and trying to deliver a project right. I'm very careful to watch out for people who say they're on board with something but their actions don't back it up right. I now kind of need to see those actions to be sure so that I can do something about it if they're not and it's it, it sounds a bit untrusting but actually it's about making sure we are all on track and delivering. As a project manager I always felt it was up to me to solve all the problems and it was a really good lesson in actually use the people around you to help you get what you need in a project done. So that kind of networked approach to managing your stakeholders, if there are other people who can help you influence them, if there are other people who can help you understand them it's okay to ask um, and I think kind of I had to get over that well you're the project manager it has to be you that's what you're here for and actually you're there to make it happen but it doesn't mean you have to be the one who does it so it was a really um, good lesson for me in that in terms of coming into a team you didn't know and needing to prove your worth but actually it didn't mean you still had to do everything and I think the other thing was to remember that actually processes are there to help you manage your stakeholders so the basic reporting process in this example actually enabled us to unlock a couple of things for the stakeholders and I'd always thought of them as very separate and actually working them together and using them to get to the same end point can be really helpful. Becca, thanks for your time and your insights. So today we've heard from Becca about a project that went wrong, how she recovered from it and what she learned from doing it. Mark Twain said, history doesn't repeat itself, but sometimes it rhymes. To me, that means that although the future is not exactly like the past, it's often similar enough for the lessons of the past to be useful. So my challenge to you is what will you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of Becca's experience? Let me know in the comments. 
If you enjoyed this interview, let me know by leaving a comment or a like or both, or by sharing it with others on social media. If enough people think these interviews are worthwhile, I'll make more of them. If you want to share your scars in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell, Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.